So recently, Canva announced a number of brand new features available to the platform. So today we are going to look at the Dream Lab, and this is Canva's AI generator. So here I am inside my Canva account. A few things to remember is that I do have the Canva Pro account. So if you have the free one, some of these features may not be available for you. If you're a free user, I am planning on doing a video that is going to be sort of like a basic introduction to Canva to start. So what we want to do is create an image with the Dream Lab. Now, you can see it all the way over here. This is the spot to the side of your screen where the Dream Lab is. Now, I'm not sure why, but I feel like before when I've logged on to Canva, there has been an icon up here that said Dream Lab right in this space here. So you may also see it there, but you'll notice with some of the Droptober features being brand new, that icon is to the left. So let's go ahead and open the Dream Lab. And if you're a Canva user, you may have seen this before. I think it used to be called Magic Media. This is the option that allows you to create an image using AI. So very similar to like a Dolly 3. To get started, as you can see, we have to describe the image that we want to create. Now I showed you how you can customize the size of the image, but the other thing you can do is actually set which style that you want. So if you click on this option that says smart, there's so many different visual styles that you can select. So this is really cool because it helps you customize your style a little bit better. If you don't want one, you can just select none. Um, so let's go ahead and choose one of these styles. I'm going to say, let me go with illustration. And now the, the image that I want, I have this prompt right over here. It says a cozy cafe where animals and the patrons feature a raccoon reading a newspaper and a fox sipping coffee and a cat playing a tiny piano. So by doing this, I should have a number of different options. All right, so here are the three different options that, that you can see. There's this one, and we have this one. Again, animals, a raccoon, a, a fox sipping coffee, and then you have our, our cat playing that uh, tiny piano. How about this one? <laughs> here we go, a diff little bit of a different variation of the same idea. So something that's really cool to be able to create that's on here. So let's try another prompt. Okay, next I'm gonna keep this 16 by nine. Let's say for this one, I'm doing a presentation and I would like the theme to, I don't know, maybe look a little bit more like an anime style. So I'm just going to choose the sketch option and my prompt is right over here, a neon lit anime street scene in Tokyo with crowds, neon signs, futuristic details inspired by cyberpunk. So let's see what Canvas Dream Lab is able to come up with from this prompt. All right, there's a number of different options. We'll look at them right over here. Here's the first one and the second one. These ones, these ones look pretty similar, um, but I do think that, uh, that, that they look pretty cool. Now, let's say that I don't like that style. I'm gonna switch to this one, cinematic concept. Now I'm going to use that same exact prompt, but this time I just chose a different style. All right, so you can see even though I chose a different style, it still ends up looking kind of similar, but you'll notice, at least in, in, in this first one, that the people who are featured in this photo do have kind of that anime style. Maybe this is something that, that I'm going for for this particular presentation. Okay, so I do want to show you some of the limitations of this program. Now, I'm going to scroll down for a particular... Uh, Let's see, what type of style am I looking for? Um, well, I'll just take this one that says cinematic. Okay, and my prompt is going to be an image of SpongeBob SquarePants giving the thumbs up sign. So let's see if this one, uh, this one works the way that I want it to because there we go. So you'll notice right now that if you put certain prompts like SpongeBob SquarePants is a copyright character and you try to create it, you'll notice here what it says at the bottom. I don't know if you saw that a second ago. Something along the lines that just says that you can't create this. The reason why, of course, is because SpongeBob is copyrighted. So if you want a specific character like this, you do really have to get creative with your prompt. 
So I went to ChatGPT and I asked it to generate a prompt that might give me a scene that, that would look similar to something that you'd see. Out of SpongeBob, this time I'm going to select Create. You can see that I've kind of described the aesthetic of SpongeBob SquarePants, but it it's not going to look exactly the same. Here we go, look at that. Okay, so while it doesn't look exactly the same it looks kind of similar which is uh which is uh which is interesting now now when i generate this you can see at the bottom it says from the previous attempt that this generation may not meet our policies your credit has been ref okay so now i'm just going to take the prompt of just my spongebob like character and i'm just going to get rid of this this time i'm going to switch this all the way down to Vector, and what Vector is going to do is to create an image that looks like a clip art kind of picture that you can use for a presentation or as an icon or however you want. So this time I'm just going, just going to take the description of the cheerful yellow sponge character, see if it can kind of create like a, a vector art image or just an image that I can use as clip art and look. There we go. You can see that it was able to generate a character who looks very similar to SpongeBob. And then from here, I can take this. If I want to use it in my design, I can just select this option, I believe. I can also download this image as well. There we go. There is my yellow image that I can take and use and, and, and use this however I want. So it's DreamLab by Canva. This is a, a great option if you're just looking for an easy way to create images that, that you can use in your presentation or whatever design you're working on. So thank you so much for watching EdTech Hustle. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment area below. And if you like this content, it would be awesome if you could subscribe.